This program airs statewide on California Public Television and is a California's Gold Classic. It was one of those beautiful fall afternoons and we were heading north on I-5 out of Redding. Now we were definitely on the lookout for our destination. We had our eyes peeled, beginning to think we were never going to get there. And then there it was in all its glory. Magnificent snow-capped Mount Shasta. 14,162 feet tall, 17 miles wide, and the second tallest mountain in California. It was a breathtaking sight, this huge volcanic rock that absolutely dominates everything around it. We'd be seeing a lot of that big old mountain the next couple of days during what turned out to be one of the most enjoyable adventures ever in search of California's gold. The town was bustling back in the 1890s. It was a lumber town, a company town, literally owned and operated by the McLeod River Lumber Company, a company that gave the town its name and constructed, among other things, rows of company-owned houses for its loyal employees. Today, McLeod is no longer a company-owned town, but the rows of original houses are still there, along with a real sense of history and civic pride. McLeod is home to about 1,600 people. It's a quiet little community nestled on the southern slope of Mount Shasta. We'd been invited to spend the weekend there during their annual Heritage Day celebration. And after spending the night in one of the local bed and breakfast, I hooked up early in the morning with three lifetime McLeod residents for a walking tour of their historic town. We're standing here right in well, it's hard to escape Mount Shasta around here, isn't it's it? It's a dominant feature. Is it something that the people here in the town ever get used to? Do you ever fail to appreciate the beauty of this mountain? Well, a lot of people take it for granted, but when you wake up in the morning, you look out your window and there she sits. Mm -hmm. And you appreciate it. Yeah, and I understand in the wintertime, it's totally covered with snow. Completely white. Yeah. It's, very, it's a beautiful, beautiful. sight. Well, it's always we're, beautiful. we're here to kind of talk about the fact that McLeod was a company town, and I guess the way to do that is to move right over here first, because wasn't that part of the lumber company's? That was the lumber company store. Uh -huh. In fact, it was probably one of the first malls in California, because in that building we had a drugstore, a woman's department, men's clothing, grocery store, meat market, hardware and it was all under one roof. You didn't have to go out in the wet. So it was probably one of the first malls in California. And that was all owned by the McLeod Lumber R Company. McLeod River Lumber Company. All the houses, everything was owned by the company. And that old adage about you owned your soul to the company store, that's it, that was McLeod. Well, was that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, we think it was great. <laughs> we were happy. Mm -hmm. it, it was beautiful. Because during the Depression years, Everybody never went, no one went hungry in McLeod. That's right. That's right. They were fed, they paid for it later, but they didn't have any problems. Mm -hmm. I worked for the McLeod River Railroad. I had a house up there that had five bedrooms, two baths, and it was two stories. And I only paid $51 a month for it. Really? 50, and steam heated and all the hot water I wanted. Now, did you know what a good deal you had you then? You better believe it. Because I know you know what a good deal you have now. <laughs> you better believe it. Now we have come to the McLeod Hospital. To the McLeod Hospital, which once again was owned by the company. Company owned, company doctors, and a company nurses. And I think there was about five or six nurses that were employed there. And uh, I think this is where all three of us were born and raised. Right. Born really? right there. And my children were also and, born. And that's mine right. too. And my children. Born here. Really? Born right there. Now, was it expensive? Was it? Well, they had health insurance for the employees, and it cost them a dollar a month, and that was for the entire family. Really? Mm -hmm. And for that, you were, you, your babies were born there? Mm -hmm. 
Your appendix were removed, your tonsils were removed, right. fixed broken legs and arms or whatever happened. Prescriptions, if you want a prescription, you just come up to the hospital and got a prescription. And that was a dollar a month dollar per, per family. Per family, right. right. Boy, McLeod is still uh, kind of a homey place to live, isn't Definite. it? Definitely, definitely. Right, everybody knows each other and and they all help each other out uh, whenever they have a a problem, so uh, it is, like you said, a homey town. Now I'm standing here in front of this absolutely beautiful little Catholic church right in the middle of downtown McLeod with Norma Catuzzo. You're a parishioner here. I am. Tell us a little bit about the history of this beautiful little church. Okay. Well, this church was built in 1931. Uh, the, the, this town used to be a lumber owned company town uh -huh. and the company gave this property to the parishioners and they also furnished all the lumber that you see at, in this church including now, the siding. Tell me about this siding because you said that was kind of special. It is. It's a Chevlin log siding and it's not made any, any longer today and this is what they used and also the interior of the church uh, was furnished by the lumber company and the parishioners built this church. They built it themselves? Yes, with, with the help of a master carpenter from the McLeod River Lumber Company. Now, no one would ever suggest remodeling, would they? No, we wouldn't let them remodel. I just thought I'd see what a reaction well, would be. Yes, I would be taking my life in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would ever suggest that. Well, one person did. They wanted to remove the altar rail because we, you know, it's not used anymore. Mm -hmm. But then that ruins the authenticity of the church, mm -hmm. right? Well, that now don't get mad at me. I wasn't suggesting no. anything. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to change a thing. I think it's beautiful just the way it is. Well, we do too. This is wonderful. Now, is this part of the history of McLeod? Well, it truly is. This dance hall was built in 1906. This is the original maple floor that was put in at that time. The stenciling on the pillars and beams are all the original. My husband and I have owned the building for just nine years, and we restored it to this point. Now, did they have dances, square dances? in McLeod back in 1906? Actually, it wasn't square dancing. It was big band era. The stage actually accommodated a large band called the Hot and Tots. The Hot and Tots? Hot and Tots, yes. And all the old timers in McLeod can tell you about the Hot and Tots. <laughs> so Saturday night in McLeod back in the 19... Six, seven, eight was a hot, this was a happening play. It really was, it really was. If these walls could talk, they could tell stories you wouldn't believe. <laughs> well, I tell you what, just walking in the place, it has that feel to it that the walls are still talking. <laughs> That's true. It has a warmth that you just can't ever replace this day and age. Yeah. <laughs> well, by this time, downtown McLeod was a beehive of activity. Heritage days were in full swing, complete with arts and crafts, hamburgers sold by the Chamber of Commerce, and an old red fire engine to look at. Meanwhile, Crosstown at the Squaw Valley Riding Club, known to the locals as the Horsemans, the annual town barbecue was going on. Now, what is this event called, or what did it used to be called? It's, it's just called the, it used to be called the Pig in a Pit, Lamb on a Spit. Wait a minute, Pig in a Pit, pig. Lamb on a Spit. Correct, correct. Pig in a Pit. Uh -huh. Lamb on a spit, uh -huh. on, on a rotisserie. And everybody in town is here. This is the, is this the beef? What, what have we got the, here? The pig. 
That's the beef, or maybe I'm backwards here. I couldn't. This is the beef. This is the pig, uh -huh. and this is rigatoni. The and lamb's that's rigatoni. Gone. <laughs> the lamb's gone. The now. Lamb's gone. For no lamb here today. But the hospitality is still here, and that's what yeah. this whole thing is all about, isn't it? It is. This is what we do best. Uh huh. This is what we do best. That's right. Now, are you all local McLeodites? We're McLeodites, but we're just not local. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, after sampling a whole plateful of pig in a pit, lamb on a spit, it was time to head out of town for the afternoon to visit two local landmarks. Now to get to them, we headed due east on Highway 99. First stop was MacArthur Bernie Falls Memorial State Park. And we were in for a real treat because this park contains one of our state's most spectacular natural wonders. We are standing here. We've heard so much about Bernie Falls, and there it is. That's Bernie Falls. Now tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about the history of this fall and why it is, you know, so many people come from so far away to see it. Bernie Falls uh, has always been one of the grand spectacles in this area, in California. Now what makes it so special? Bernie Falls probably is most special because it's a spring-fed waterfall that uh, gives out 100 million gallons of water every single day, nonstop, all year round. It never slows down. It never dries up like a lot of western waterfalls that depend upon snow melt from the surrounding mountains. Well, we are now really right here on the edge. It's right here at the edge. You can really get a sense of the power of these things here definitely a lot of power. Uh, imagine 100 million gallons of water a day tra uh, falling 129 feet constantly. Okay, we're down here. Are y'all having fun down here? Yeah. Well, now, what have you seen? What are you sitting here contemplating? We're contemplating an ancient geologic marvel. Uh, we've read all the signs. I saw it once about 25 years ago and had entirely forgotten what it's all about. Uh huh. Now I'm contemplating the trek back up. That's going to be a little, a little tough at my age. I'm just noticing, looking up here at this cliff, there's water shooting out of the whole side of the cliff. It's not just a waterfall. That's true. In fact, that is one of the things that makes this waterfall particularly special compared to a lot of other waterfalls. It's more than just water coming over the top of a cliff. It's water coming out of the side of the cliff, creating this beautiful veil effect. How many different water spouts are there up there? Hundreds. There's got to be at least hundreds. Not only those that are there, there are a few right over here on the other side of the stream. And uh, if you were to follow this stream upstream from above the falls, you would see that stream get smaller and smaller and smaller because it's picking up new springs as it comes down the way. And these are shooting right out of the side. These are coming right out of the rock. Right out of the, the side. The big ones are coming from a stream. That's correct. But even that stream in the middle of the summer isn't very long because it's bone dry about another mile upstream from there. It's all coming out from under the rock in the middle of the summer. One thing I would like to add is that this is also protected as one of our beautiful California state parks. And it, in fact, is one of the oldest California state parks. It was purchased by people who wanted to make sure that this did not get uh, taken away from the people, that it uh, would not be developed for hydroelectric power, to leave it exactly as it is, a natural wonder for people to come and visit and enjoy. This family, the MacArthur family, over in the Fall River Valley, purchased this beautiful waterfalls and the land surrounding it and presented it as a gift to the people of California to be forever preserved in public trust as a state park. What a wonderful gift. Yes, indeed. Leaving Bernie Falls, we headed back toward McLeod on Highway 99. On our way to the second local landmark, we were told we just had to see. Destination, Fowler's Campground in the Shasta Trinity National Forest. We were there to visit a place that's been a part of life for generations of McLeodites. Now, Philip, you brought us here because you said this was 
one of the most special places in McLeod. Where are we? We're at uh, Lower Falls, just south of the Fowler's Campground. And uh -huh. There's three falls here. There's Upper Falls, there's Middle Falls, and Lower Falls. This spot here is where we usually uh, swim. And I came out here when I was a kid, and everything, everybody else in town came out here as they was a kid. So is this known as the swimming hole? The swimming hole, yes. <laughs> How cold is the water in that swimming hole? Because we're standing here looking down at a bunch of people. I don't see anybody in the water. It's cold. I'll tell you that. It's really cold. Uh -huh. I don't know the exact temperature, but you usually jump in and get across as fast as you can. <laughs> OK, here we go. We're getting right down to it. Now, can you dive off from over here? No. You need to dive off over either off the ladder or off over the corner there because it's not deep enough right here. How deep is this? I don't know the exact depth that we've never touched the bottom. Really? So it's deep? It's deep. When a friend of I, mine jumped off there and tried to swim down as deep as we could and I ran out of air because I'm not much of a swimmer so we came back up. So you've never touched bottom here? No, I've never touched bottom. Now how come there's not anybody in there today swimming? It's a little bit cool and that water is 42 degrees year round. That's, uh, it may be cooler now, but year-round, if it could be 100 degrees out here and hot, that water is still 42 degrees. So it's a little bit on the chilly side. Yeah. You don't, you don't put your toe in and you dive in <laughs> and hold your breath because it takes your breath away. And get out quick. Get out, yeah. They got a ladder. They have a ladder there, uh -huh. a metal ladder they put up so the guys... We used to have a rope when we were kids. We had a rope tied to one of the rocks, and then we'd climb on the rope and come up on the rope. Now, is this a place that everybody, all the locals, know about this place? Oh, you place? better believe it. Oh, yeah. This was our swimming hole. Yeah, we had a swimming pool in town. It's not there anymore. We had a swimming pool. Nah, there was hardly anybody there. We're all out here on the weekend. Your daughter is down to her bikini here. She is at her bikini. She's at her best right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is her best. Hi, Mel. <laughs> Melanie. Melanie, where's your clothes? Well, this is a clothing optional swimming I hole. I guess so. We're, we're happppy here though. <laughs> uh oh no. No. Not on TV, huh? <laughs> That's your penny suit, honey. Now have you ever been up here before? Yes, I have, since I was a little girl. So you're a local, you're used to this. Yes, yeah, so originally from San Francisco, but I come up here every summer. So you know how cold this is. Yes, but it feels wonderful. It feels great. And you're going in right yeah. now. We've yeah. been waiting for somebody to go in. <laughs> yes, we are. You're ready. Your, We're your ready. friend is going in with you. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Whoa! <laughs> Now, how cold are they feeling right now? About, uh, I'd say, uh, 43, 44 degrees. So they're feeling it. Yeah, they're feeling it. Now we got two more customers. Come on, fellas. Come on. Before you hit the water, hold your breath, OK? Because it'll take yeah. your breath away. It'll take your breath away. So just hold your nose, hold your breath when you hit the water. You'll be fine. OK, okay here we go, what fellas. The, uh, what about the white water over there? Can you jump Don't into it? it? That's the place you want to jump. Yeah, that's, that's, the deep, that's the deep. That's what I wanted All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. They're off. <laughs> Whoa. Well, let's go. You want me to count? <laughs> one, two, three. Come on, go. It's a long way down there. I know. I know. You ready? One. Go! <laughs> Do you believe me now that the water is cold? That water is cold. <laughs> you better. You gonna jump again? Now, am I an honorary McLeod? You are. You are officially a McLeod. Officially. Woo! <laughs> you like seeing that, don't I you? I do, yeah. <laughs> it was a fun afternoon.
as we climbed aboard a train run by the McLeod River Railway Company and headed out through some beautiful country. Now this railroad is historic itself because it's been here since 1897, part of the McLeod logging industry. And on this particular excursion, I ended up meeting and talking with Raymond Kofelt, who worked on the McLeod River Railway back in the 30s. Well, it's fun to come back. Yes, it is. I tell you what, looking down here at these beautiful big trees, we're cutting right through the middle of them. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing like it was in the old days. You know, they had some logs that was only, they were about eight or nine foot through. From high as I can reach, one to a car. One log to a car? Right. 32 foot log. I can show you the pictures of them. Boy, those were big oh, trees. Oh, yes. And they also had sugar pine, which is wonderful wood. Sugar pine is really wonderful. They had a lot of that. Uh, this was rich, very rich country in timber. This is all logged off. You know, it's all gone. Standing back here on the back of the caboose with the president of McLeod Railroad Company, it would have been very easy for this little railroad to go under, to disappear, wouldn't it have been? Yeah, it sure would. There's been a lot of the railroads uh, that have been logging railroads and lumber railroads uh, because of the pressure from environmental movements and because of uh, other elements and less trees have been, uh, uh, have been become extinct. And uh, there's not a whole lot of the small logging railroads left. We're one of the few. Why is this railroad still here? Well, it's been a pretty tough struggle. Uh, the traffic has been really down a lot, but we have been able to uh, uh, persevere by being a little bit innovative and trying a few new things, even taking a few passengers around and kind of showing them uh, the woods of the old time. And Like today. Exactly. Today's kind of a special time. Uh, uh, we're participating in a festival in McLeod. It's really like a history lesson, isn't it, to come out on this stretch of track that under normal under normal circumstances, we would never see. Right, there's a lot of the railroads that have just been picked up and sold to the scrapyards and, and uh, never to be laid again, probably. Because the idea was these were never passenger routes, basically. That's correct. Uh, they, it was to bring the logs in from the woods, and, and then the tracks also served the purpose of getting the finished product out to market. Yeah. So now, with a trip like this, the old railroad line has a whole new life to it. Exactly, yeah, we're, we're able to kind of share it with other people. Uh, uh, the woods out here, the woodsy scene, I think is, uh, is really an enjoyment for people to see. It's just, uh, and then you just hear the clickety-clack and it's just kind of a fun, fun situation. Yeah, let's just listen to the clickety-clack for a minute, because that's a wonderful sound. Well, to end our program, we have come to this unbelievable place. This is Bruce French, who is head of the McLeod Community Services District, right? Right. Very good. And you have brought us here to the, explain what this is. This is basically the McLeod Reservoir, right? Yes, it is. The water uh, comes down from the mountain where it's melted into the ground. It comes out of the springs, lower down on the mountain. From there, we pipe it down to McLeod Street into people's houses. So I think we can see it. That's Mount Shasta right beyond the pine trees there. That's the pipe. There's the water pouring out. This is the water from the snow on Mount Shasta. That's right. That's right. And you don't treat it? No. No chemicals? Not unless we have to. No filtration plant? No. Do you know how unusual this is? <laughs> well, I do. I've come from other parts of the country. This is really special. Would you it's... travel around California and you talk to other guys who are in your position in other towns and cities? They're they... amazed. They're really amazed. Yeah. I'm amazed. I go into a store and people are buying this stuff for, what, a dollar a bottle or whatever, and we have an unlimited supply practically. Well, we have climbed through the hole in the fence, and we are now standing right here over this wonderful water. Is this cold water? 
Yes, it is really cold. It's about 39 degrees. It, uh, it starts as snow up on the mountain, goes in the ground, never sees the light of day until it comes out of the pipe. So it doesn't have a chance to cool off. Because yesterday I went swimming at Fowler's at the swimming hole and it was cold. Sure, it's, it's cold there, but it's been uh, subjected to the heat of the sunshine. Our water doesn't see sunshine until it comes out of people's taps, and it's like it just melted up on the mountain. So it's, it's ice water, basically. So this is colder than where I went swimming yesterday? Much, much. Really? It's, uh, it's too cold to go swimming in. You, you, you'd get, uh, you could have a heart attack in this water. <laughs> So I won't fall in. You told me that you all don't even make ice at your house, ice right, water? Right, right, right. We, uh, we mainly drink the water. We don't drink a lot of soft drinks, and we don't even bother with ice cubes. It's just cold right out of the tap. Wow. All right, as we close now, I'm going to go over and get a taste of this. Now, is this sweet water? Does it... Does it yes. have a certain taste to it? Yes, it tastes good. <laughs> it, there's no flatness to it at all. Oh, man. Isn't that good? This is wonderful water. McLeod water. Mount Shasta water. And this is a wonderful way for us to end this grand adventure we've had in this beautiful little town of McLeod, right beneath one of the most beautiful places not only in our state, but in the world, Mount Shasta. Clean water, clean air, blue skies, you couldn't ask for anything more. This is a wonderful example of California's gold. Well, hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser, and I sure hope you enjoyed this adventure. If you'd like to see it again, or share it with your family or friends, or perhaps donate a copy to your local school or library, it's available on video cassette and on DVD. All you have to do is call 1-800-266-5727, and we'll be glad to send it to you right away. Mm -hmm.